Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, I'm gonna be starting cooking today. Uh, first, I wanna say that um, we've had death in the family this week. My husband's uncle Calvin passed away Tuesday morning. They found him passed away in his sleep. So I'm getting ready to cook some food to take it over to the house because you know how it is when somebody dies in the family. Everybody and anybody comes over. And I just want to take something off of my mother-in-law's shoulder today. So I'm gonna cook her a meal and take it over there so she won't have to worry about that today. Okay, so what I'm gonna be cooking today is my um, turkey helper. I have a video for that. And I'm not gonna show every single thing that I put in here, but I'm gonna include it in this video. I'm gonna be making some green beans, um, some cornbread, and a dessert probably because this right here is the pasta and the meat. So that's the carbohydrate and the meat and the vegetable. Okay, so um, I'm gonna get everything done. And at the end of this video, I'm gonna try to do a photo tribute to my Uncle Calvin and dedicate it to him. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So this is gonna be a double pack, a double um, batch recipe. All right, this is my Genio ground turkey. And we got the pan that's been getting hot for me. Turn it down a little bit. Okay. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and get the spices. Okay, this is my recipe that I printed from the description on the video. So I printed it off so I have everything out here. The only thing we're gonna substitute today is I don't have um, any cream of celery soup. So what we're gonna, or cream of chicken soup. So we're gonna just add double the amount. We're gonna put, probably put like three cans of the cream of mushroom soup. Okay, so let me go ahead and get everything out here. We need, let's see. the turkey, the pasta, chicken broth. We're gonna be making the chicken broth with just our bouillon. We're gonna put a whole onion in there so we're not gonna use the minced onion, the dried minced onion. Sapia your mama seasoning. We have the parsley flakes. We have this type of saison, okay, we're gonna use today and it's more orange so the color of it is gonna be more orange at the end. Then I'm gonna put some of my sage out of the garden. All right, and we've got to put celery salt. There we go. Granulated onion. Let's see, that's onion powder. And we're going to put some granulated onion in here too. If I can find it. Well, gar I'm sorry, granulated garlic. Repeating myself a little bit. This is the fine powder. All right, and crushed red pepper flakes. Let's see. It's in here somewhere. Then my girls come down here cooking. I usually try to keep whatever I'm using close to the front. So this is what the new bottle of the parsley flakes looks like. And this is kind of old, so they're a little bit darker, but we're gonna go ahead and use this first. But I like how bright and green that looks for a new one. 
Okay, so that's all that we need from there. So I'm gonna get this done. Of course, I'm gonna bring you up closer so you can see it. Let me go ahead and bring you up a little bit. Just a little bit more. Take myself out of the frame. All right, I know I told y'all I was gonna cook some green beans too. So what I'm gonna do is, I'll turn it back up a little bit. I'm gonna let this brown turkey simmer. And this right here, these packages, what I got from Sam's, um, they were a little smaller than what I usually get from the grocery stores. So I usually use one three pound package of the brown turkey, but this right here is two two pound packages that I got from Sam's. So we're gonna be adjusting this recipe up just a little bit. So we're really only working with four pounds of ground turkey instead of six. Okay, now let's see. We're gonna let that simmer for a few minutes. I wanna get all those pieces, you know, make sure everything is cooked real good. And we're not gonna be draining anything off of here because it's not gonna be a whole lot of, it's not gonna be any grease. It's gonna be just some juice from when it cooked. So we're not gonna drain it off. We're gonna go ahead and add the seasonings and everything. And I'm gonna go ahead and put my pasta on. This is the pasta that I'm gonna be using today. Um, I don't know the name of the uh, <laughs> of the shape that it is. Uh, I can't pronounce any of this stuff. Made in Italy. I got my water running, y'all, for this pasta. Filling up my um, boiling pot. But this is the kind I'm gonna use because it's thicker. And the way that I like for this um, turkey heifer to taste it reminds me of chicken and dumplings when you use a thicker noodle like this. So it's gonna be really good. I hope they enjoy it tonight over there with the family. And um, I'm gonna put two bags in here and I'll see if I'm gonna add the whole two, two pounds in there. Cause this is gonna be, it is 17.6 ounces. So it's a little more, <laughs> gonna be a little more than two pounds. Now y'all see, I like to use, or y'all know me, y'all been watching me since 2019 when i started my channel um <laughs> my stove is not big enough for my pots okay so um i'm gonna you know i'm gonna use the stove as efficiently as i can with my big pots okay so i'm gonna go ahead and get this finished up and it's looking pretty good. And then I'm going to put my water, a little bit of water in the pan back there. And put my green beans. Go ahead and get it started up. Okay. So, this is about half a gallon of water. I'm just going to put that in there just so I can get them turkey tails going. Okay. And y'all know a lot of people don't eat pork anymore. I eat pork still, but I'm really trying to wean myself off of it. I think the only thing I really have a hard time not eating now is fried pork chops. Okay, I can do it with the bacon, I can do it with the ham. You know, I may eat it occasionally, but now my husband, Monty, I don't know, it's gonna be a hard time trying to get him weaned off the pork chops. Uh, he can eat a whole trough of bacon, so I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna do when it comes to that. But what I'm gonna do is go ahead and get these turkey tails washed up, and then I'm gonna put them in that water, and then I'm gonna top them off with the green beans. I say I'm kind of hesitant to put these things on there. They were in the freezer, okay? So I bought these back in June, maybe the beginning of June, something like that. And y'all, it's August now. Um, after I posted that video of how to cook something with turkey tails when I use them, I don't know if, I, I don't want to blow my own head up, but I couldn't find turkey tails at Walmart for like a month. Uh, so when I find them, I try to snap them up, okay? It's getting ready to be fall. It's coming in the next, um, it's August, September, in September. So I want to probably try to stock up on them because we're getting ready to change the type of food that we eat. But um, I couldn't find these jokers nowhere. I said, damn, maybe that was good. But people have been using smoked turkey tails for years and years and years. There's nothing new. I just discovered them recently. So I ain't trying to act like I invented them because I didn't. But um, I, could not, I know I couldn't find them, okay? All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get the turkey tails washed off and put the top on there so we can get that to a boil. And then we're gonna come back and start adding the seasonings in here so we can get this tur turkey real good and flavorful and our noodles ready. I'm gonna go ahead and put these turkey tails in there and let them come to a boil. I'm gonna 
flip top on them. All right, now I'm gonna start adding my seasonings to this turkey. I think I'm gonna add the, what it says on the recipe to start off with. Okay, so slap your mama seasonings. It's gonna be two teaspoons. There we go. One teaspoon of rubbed sage. One teaspoon of the celery salt. One teaspoon of the onion powder. up a little bit. Yes, I am. I thought you were going to come out here and help me today, Mr. Lily. <laughs> what you look for? I'm making the um, turkey helper. Turkey. I like turkey. But I'm taking this over to uh, the house tonight. Can I come? Yeah, are you coming? Oh. Coming with you? the house tonight so they don't have to worry about cooking nothing some of them okay then we're gonna put the you know what i said i was gonna put a whole onion i forgot i'm putting the whole onion in my um green beans so i do need to put some granulated onion or minced onion in here and i'm gonna put two tablespoons from sam's There we go. You hungry? Yes. Okay, there we go. Now I'm going to put the garlic. One teaspoon of garlic. Let me put two in there. I want to use this up because I bought this powdered, fine powder garlic by mistake i meant to get the granulated picked up the wrong darn thing okay now i'm gonna put half of a one half of a teaspoon of the crushed red pepper flakes so i don't want it to be too hot then i'm going to put just the um two teaspoons of the parsley flakes It smells good already, doesn't it, Jalila? Mm -hmm. You smell it? Yeah. I smell the oils coming downstairs. Did you? Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, when I first started making this, um, I think after the first dish, the first um, time I made it, I was like, I'm going to put some sage in it because I wanted to taste more like chicken and dumplings or more like turkey and dressing. Okay? So the sage and the celery gives it more flavor more of that flavor versus the hamburger regular hamburger helper taste okay once we get all this in here we're gonna let it simmer for about um about five minutes let's see what it says on here how long i let it simmer before i add the pasta okay let it simmer five minutes then add the soup and the broth and then the pasta okay so the pasta still has to cook Okay, I'm gonna let this cook about five minutes, then I'm turning it off. I'll come back to y'all when I get ready to add the pasta in there and everything together. All right, y'all, what I'm gonna do now, my pot is coming to a ball right here. I know y'all can't see back here at the back, but let me go back here a little bit. Let me, let me take it back there to the back a little bit. Let's see. <clears throat> there we go, that's better. Okay, I just wanted, 
to let you see the turkey tails back there at the back. I'm going to let them cook for about an hour before I put my um, green beans in them. <clears throat> because then I'm going to cook the green beans for about another hour. And then they will be done. Okay. But I want to make sure that the turkey tails are about pork tender before I put the green beans on top of them. All right. So what I'm going to do is put two teaspoons of the chicken bouillon right here. This is the kind that I use. I get it from Sam's on the Spanish aisle. And then, you know, this is my favorite, my favorite. It just, it adds just a, just the right, just the right touch. Okay. I'm going to add two teaspoons of this too. Okay. I'm going to add that to it. And then I'm going to put the top back on it. And then I'm come over here and cut up my onion, okay? But <laughs> right now, my pot is ready for the pasta. So um, what I'm gonna do is quit dropping stuff. <laughs> I'm sorry. But anyway, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and add both of these bags of pasta to this pot. I haven't put any oil in it. But I'm going to, and I have my turkey turned off because I don't want it to be tough by the time this starts, okay? So this right here is my pot for the pasta. I'm gonna let that drain a little bit, put it in the sink. Then I'm gonna go ahead and add the pasta and then I'm gonna stand over it until I think it's past the sticking stage where it sticks to the bottom. Okay, let me tell y'all something, honey. These this pasta, you get it from Sam's on the pasta aisle, and it comes in a six pack, okay? And I love it because when I'm cooking this turkey helper, it, those, it's just good, okay? And you're gonna let it simmer so that it can absorb the flavors and stuff from the turkey helper, and it's just gonna be like you're eating chicken and dumplings. <sighs> okay, we're gonna keep on stirring this up. I don't wanna stir the whole time, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and Keep on stirring this until it gets past this point and walk off and come back. Because I don't want it sticking to the pot and I don't want it sticking together. All right, we're going to make some cornbread too. And see, everything I have, um, I don't have a, a video for the green beans and turkey tails, I don't think. But I'll check and see. But I do have a video for the cornbread. I have a video for the smoked turkey tails. And I'm going to make them some um, chest cake too. So I do have videos for all of that. And I'll just put links in the description of those videos so that y'all will be able to go back and make whatever you need to, okay? I hadn't posted in a while. I've been busy with a whole lot of things, you know? My life is just a busy, oh my God, it's just a jumble mess sometimes. But you know, I told y'all that I was having some health problems and I found out that I am premenopausal and I'm not ashamed to say that, but you know, it is what it is. I'm 52 years old. I'll be 53 in uh, December. And the only reason I'm premenopausal is because I have this IUD in. So they're not gonna take that out until I turn 55. And by then my doctor told me that I should be in, you know, it's gonna it'll take a little while for me to get in there, but everything will go full force to menopause. Okay, cause right now I'm having the hot flashes at nighttime. It's not extremely bad, but it, it's, you know, it depends on what, you know, whatever. And um, let me turn this camera so you can see me talking. Okay, here we go. So, um, yeah, I'm premenopausal right now. And I'm gonna tell you what, it takes every last bit of my energy. <sighs> Sometimes I feel like Mike Tyson don't got a hold to me. I don't want to do nothing. I don't have the energy to do anything. So I'm working on my diet, working on losing weight as usual, trying to get everything back in line so that I can start getting some of my strength back so that I can come back in here and start making some videos for y'all. But, you know, I'm not dead. I'm here. I'm still here. I'm alive and kicking. I'm just trying to make sure that I can bring y'all some quality uh, data because right now I cook. Okay, don't think I'm not cooking. I cook, but it's easier for me to come in the kitchen and cook a meal. It's quicker for me to come in the kitchen and cook a meal for my family than to make a video. Because making a video, you stopping and you doing things. Then you have to put everything together. You have to make sure it's presented good. You have to make sure that you got a good picture for your thumbnail. 
you have to make sure that everything is in order in order to post that video and then you edit it okay so i just don't have the energy for that i didn't have the energy for that but i'm gonna make myself now i'm feeling better start taking some uh supplements and my energy is coming back and that's all i'm gonna say about that but anyway i got my broth ready for this uh turkey helper my chicken broth i made it with the bouillon you know so i'm not ready when it's ready when those when that right there gets ready it's gonna go in here now this right here turkey helper doesn't take long at all to get together all you got to do is brown that uh, or cook your turkey cook your pasta then you add all your seasonings together and you let it simmer a little bit and that's it okay now i'm gonna stop talking y'all there i'm going over here and chop this onion so i can put it in here with these green beans when it gets ready okay i got my onion chopped up and this is the kind of green beans i'm using this is the cut italian green beans my hand over my hand over I'm making a video down here. Okay, so I like to use this brand because it has the white can lining. And to me, that takes away some of the um, can taste this brand does. So I'm pouring into my colander in the sink. And I'm going to start off with three cans. And I'll see if I'm going to need that fourth one. Okay, probably won't. be careful with these i don't like using the can openers i like to use my kitchen mama because it turns the edges down no sharp edges but this right here is a little slow so i like to use that manual one to get it done fast okay i always like to rinse through my green beans because it helps to get that can tape off of them and I go back in there and I like to cut the little stems off sometimes. Well, let me see. There we go. That little stem, I cut them off. But sometimes there's some big stems in here. Let's see if I can find some today. I don't want nobody to find them when they're eating them, but you know, sometimes you do. But I rinse the can off. To me, it helps to rinse the taste of the can off when you rinse them. I've never used that juice that comes in the can of green beans because that will give it just a can taste. All right, so I'm going to let them sit there and drain until it, they're ready to put into the turkey tails my pasta is done i'm gonna go ahead and take it off the eye and drain it pour it over there in the in the colander the same colander that i had the green beans in okay all right i'm coming over with some hot stuff so let's be real careful okay we got a lot of that stuck to that bottom so what we're gonna do put some water in there this is not usually my pot that i cook my pasta in um, let me get me a oven mitt and put it on the counter. Let it sit there because I'm not losing none of that. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put my turkey tails on this rapid boil eye so they can get done. All right, now I'm going to rinse these off just a little bit. Get some cold water and let them drain over here. Okay, I guess the ancestors told me to stop because it stopped it. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is get the turkey ready. We don't got turned all around. So let me get my handle back, put it that way. All right, so what we're gonna do right here is go ahead and add some broth to this. And then let it come to a boil. And then we're gonna Add the soup and then the pasta. Okay, so I'll be back as soon as we come to a boil. We're gonna be adding more broth than that because we're working with a good bit of pasta. Okay. 
All right, let me check these turkey tails to see if they are done. Enough for me to put the green beans in there. Nope, they need a little bit longer. We'll let them go about 30 more minutes and we'll come back and check them. All righty. All right, now y'all, the magic is getting ready to happen. What I'm gonna do is open up the soup and go ahead and put the soup in. Then I will add the pasta. And this is again, just cream of mushroom soup. Two cans in there first. It smells so good, y'all. I'm gonna need that last can, so, or the third can, because I do have four sitting out here, but I'm only gonna add the three. Get your butt back out of there. I just hate when my darn utensils fall down in there. You can tell it's a good fresh can of soup because the soup just comes out of there without any struggle. Now, if it was old, you'd have to really scrape it out. Okay, now we're gonna add the pasta, and this is two whole pounds. And we will be able to see how much we're gonna add of it. Now, we may or may not need to add it all, but we're getting ready to find out. I mean, this is the best part, the pasta. So we're gonna turn it down a little bit so that it can slow down cooking because we want it to simmer at this point. Could have got what got away with just making one um, bag of pasta since it's only an extra pound of meat. But I will save this pasta. This is all I'm gonna add in here, y'all, because it looks like it's gonna be enough. And I'm gonna get a heavier spoon. And y'all do remember, I have some that stuck to the pan a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and put that in there. I put some water on it to get it unstuck. I'm gonna go ahead and put it right there. And that's the last pasta that I'm gonna add. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is just let everything marry together. And we're gonna get all of those seasonings and spices mixed together. And then we'll give it a taste and see what we need to add. And I'm gonna take this, I'm being messy, I'm sorry y'all. I'm gonna take this whole pot over to my mother-in-law's house and I'm gonna add some more parsley to make it pretty. But we're gonna go ahead and let this simmer for a while. See what we come up with. Some more chicken broth. 
okay? Because we want it to be flavorful and not salty. Okay, so let us go ahead and simmer. Okay, and I'm going to... Now, this isn't the top to go to this pot, but I can't seem to lay my hands on it right now. But you know, I got two little amateur cooks that come out here in the kitchen and move all my stuff. So I'm going to let that go ahead and simmer for a while, and I will be back. This how much pasta we have left y'all so this is really enough for another whole serving okay another whole dish of this so i will make this another time when it cools off i will put it in the refrigerator it comes to down to room temperature i put it in the freezer and save it for the next time now i'm going to make my cornbread i'm gonna start out with a little over half a stick of butter Whew, that's too much oil i'm gonna take some out of there that's peanut oil Okay, let's see, let's see, let's see. Yeah, let me take some out of there. Now, y'all know I like to use yellow cornmeal for my cornbread. I think it makes it look richer, and when you're frying fish with it, it makes it look good, too. But when I went to Ingles, I didn't have any, so I don't have any yellow cornmeal. So what I'm going to do is use my white. Okay, I'm going to put three cups of cornmeal in here. Put just a tad more because all my cups wasn't completely full. Okay, and then I'm going to cut to put about a cup and a half of flour. And this is self rising flour and self rising cornmeal. Okay. All right, that's about a cup and a half. We're going to leave that in there. I usually have my measuring cups already in there, but for some reason I don't. This is my two cup measuring cup that I like to leave in my cornmeal. All right, so I'm gonna add some sugar. And you don't have to, usually if I'm, it depends on what I'm eating, that I want sweet cornbread. But Monty and the girls like to eat sweet cornbread, so I make sure I put sugar in it so they can eat it. We're gonna leave this in there. All right, now I'm gonna put a heaping tablespoon of Duke's mayo. Yep, I put mayo in my cornbread. Now this is a recipe from my grandma. And we just have always done it, and I don't, I don't stray from it because it makes the cornbread good, light and fluffy. Okay, then we're gonna put two eggs in here. Now I do have a recipe for sweet cornbread on my channel, and I will, as I said, add it in the description. I'll put a link in there for it. Okay, so we're gonna add some sweet milk whole milk, white milk to this. And then as soon as the butter melts in the oven, we're gonna coat that dish with cornmeal so that it won't sticky sticky. Then we're gonna add the cornmeal, the mix to it. And then we're gonna bake it in the oven at 425. Okay, we're gonna add this milk. Keep it in consideration that we're still gonna have to add oil. So we don't want it real thin. Okay, but we are gonna get everything mixed together. So that was three cups of cornmeal, about one and a half cups of flour, two large eggs, a heaping tablespoon of mayo, and then we added sugar to your liking. Okay, we're going to make sure that's good and mixed together. Don't take that long to make mix cornbread up. And y'all, let me tell you about the story, what, what happened. You know, Monty doesn't eat a lot of stuff that I make. So, uh, one day I was down here and we came across some Jiffy cornbread boxes. And he was like, you don't make Jiffy cornbread? And I said, no, I don't make Jiffy cornbread. You already know this. Okay, so um, what happened is I put the Jiffy cornbread in the cabinet. It was some of my sons and Jordans, okay, his girlfriends. They had left it over here when they, from when they moved out. So <laughs> I said, um, I put it in the cabinet and forgot about it. So the next time I made some cornbread, I made my cornbread homemade with my yellow cornmeal. And um, when we were eating dinner that night, Munchie was eating. When he came home from work, I said, um, you eat Jiffy cornbread, right? And he was like, yeah. I said, oh, okay. So I said, well, dinner's done. You know, go downstairs, get settled in, go downstairs and get you a plate. 
He came upstairs with a big slice of cornbread, and I forgot what I had cooked, but he bit into that cornbread, and he started eating it. He said, now, this is what cornbread's supposed to taste like. <laughs> I said, uh, I made that cornbread from scratch. That's not jiffy. He, you know what, y'all, if, if for a split second, I thought he was getting ready to spit it out, but, <laughs> but he didn't. He ate it, and he ate the whole piece, and I was glad, but uh, I don't think I've made it since then. This has been probably a couple months back, but, um... You know, I, I didn't try to trick him. I just didn't tell him that it wasn't Jiffy. So that, that's not tricking him. But the thing is, you know, he always used to say, I don't want to eat cornbread. I don't eat cornbread. But he never tasted it. So I'm like, taste something before you say you don't eat it. Because everybody cook different, you know. My cornbread, it don't be hard, you know, like, you know, just stiff and dry. It's good. Okay, so that's that little story for y'all. Be careful when you're working with this hot oil because it's hot. Right. Now what I'm going to do is take some cornmeal and put it in the bottom and we're going to shake it up back and forth or we're going to coat this pan, the glass dish, just so it won't stick. We do this the same way we do a... Uh, cast iron frying pan and be careful Mommy, hmm? can you stop the milk? Hmm? can you stop the milk yes that's good sweetie okay so what i'm gonna do is put this on the counter with an oven mitt with an oven mitt and i'm gonna pour it in there after i get it stirred up Look, sweetie. so at this time we're gonna stir it up and make sure that we have enough milk in it. Have enough liquid. Okay, we're going to add a little bit more milk because we don't want it to be stiff cornbread. Let me see what y'all are looking at. See what y'all can see. Okay, that's good. A little bit more. That's good right there. You want to make sure that you incorporate your oil and your butter and your milk in here. Get everything mixed up good so it looks a little thicker than cornmeal, than a uh, cake batter. Okay, now we're going to go here to the counter and pour it in there. I went over to the sink and knocked out a little bit more of that excess cornmeal. Okay, so what we're going to do now is just pour it in. Now, if this was our cast iron frying pan, it'll be frying. <laughs> It will be still on the stove and it will be a little bit, you know, hot and it will be frying and then you would get that crust on the very bottom when it's done. Okay, we're going to put all that in there and that's going to be some nice, oops, if I could lose it, some nice and fluffy cornbread when we get finished. We're going to pop it in a 425 degree oven until it's done. And don't forget to put your mitts on because this is a glass dish and it's hot. You don't want to burn your hands. It is in the oven. All right, so we're gonna let that cook until it's brown. All right, let's go over here and check on these turkey tails. <coughs> Excuse me, y'all. <coughs> oh yeah. Oh, this is good. This is good and tender, so it's time to put them green beans in there, y'all. Okay, what we're gonna do first. And I did use all four cans of these green beans. Drop them off in there. Okay. Then we're gonna put this onion on top of it. Go. Add a little more water. Now, since our um, turkey tails doesn't have a whole lot of fat in it, we're going to put some avocado oil. 
that's it right there and this is what i get from sam's so we're gonna let that come to a boil we're gonna let those green beans cook 45 minutes to an hour and then they'll be done um, that looks good y'all look how fluffy it is okay what i'm gonna do is do a test with the butter knife to see if it's ready Look like it's done. We're gonna try it. It looks done. You think so? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna drop it. This thing too thick. <laughs> okay, let me sit it down. That's what I'm gonna have to do. Let me sit it right here. I wanna sit on the glass and it break. Oh, that's done. Oh, wait a minute. It needs about five more minutes. You see that on there? Nothing can be on it. Okay. So that's not ready yet. So we're going to put it back up in here. About five more minutes. And then we'll get it out. And that way it won't be real dry. Okay. Ooh, these green beans rock and rolling, boy. Just ready. What we're gonna do is rub some cornbread on some uh, butter <laughs> on top of it. Cool, and then we're gonna cut it. All right, the last thing we're gonna make is the chocolate chest cake, and this is the same thing as a ooey gooey butter cake. But we're gonna take one stick of butter and melt it. The butter is melted, so next, what we're gonna do is put a recipe over there in the corner. Next, we're going to take the cake mix, and this is a 15.25 ounce cake mix. I like devil's food cake or butter cake. You can use whatever kind of cake mix that you want. Okay, we're gonna put the cake mix. Dump it right over in here. With the butter, a whole stick of butter. Then we're gonna take one egg, crack it in there. Then we're gonna take one cup of chopped nuts. This is walnuts. And we're gonna mix all this together. And this is gonna be stiff, so don't try to add any water or milk or anything to it. all mixed together we're gonna put it in a 9 by 13 inch baking dish and as I said this is gonna be stiff it's supposed to be you want to get all that out of there okay what we're gonna do is press this evenly into this baking dish and these right here dishes I get from um 
Walmart. And it comes with a lid on them. I like to use them when I'm using, when I'm making desserts like this because they don't get burned out and this pan stays pretty and it's good to take somewhere. They sometimes have them where they have the handle built into the top, but this one doesn't, I don't think. But when I go out there in the garage, I'll see. So you take your hand, okay, however you wanna do it, and just make sure that you try to have this bottom layer as even as you can. Now my family really goes crazy for this on holidays, whenever I make it. I make the, um, the butter cake, the butter recipe, a lot too of the cake mix and they love that and i put pistachio um not pistachio but macadamia nuts in it and it really you know kicks it up a notch okay so that looks even okay so we're gonna set this to the side and we're gonna make the topping all right i wash my bowl out we're gonna use the same one we're gonna melt this eight ounce block of cream cheese all right, there we go. We're going to pop it in the microwave and soften it. I know I said milk, but we're going to soften it because we don't want it runny. All right, it was already soft, so it didn't take no more than like 30 seconds. So it's already good and soft. So now what we're going to add is a whole box of powdered sugar. This is one pound, okay? Doesn't matter if you use Dixie Crystal, Walmart brand, uh, Domino's like I'm using, whatever brand you want to use, okay? Then we're going to add two eggs. Now, y'all, y'all know y'all always give me the devil for my imitation vanilla extract, so I've made some. This right here I've been working on for this is the third month, okay? This is my... Vanilla, the Madagascar, Madagascar vanilla beans with rum. Okay, so I'm gonna add, this is the first time I've opened this up. So let's see. And give it a smell. Wow. This smells just like vanilla extract. You wanna come smell it? You don't know, do you? Do you know? Okay, oh my goodness. I can smell the vanilla in here. So this is the first time I'm using it. So I'm gonna add two teaspoons. Of this right here and you can see the vanilla beans are still in it and i do have a video that i'm going to be showing y'all um my other vanilla still looks a little light my other because i made some with moonshine and some with vodka didn't add enough beans from the recipe i'm gonna close this back up i got these bottles from um marshall's and they were 3.99 each they do have some at dollar tree for a dollar and 25 cents. Okay, so what you're gonna do now is just mix everything together. This is gonna be your cream cheese topping for the topping of your chest cake or ooey gooey butter cake. So you're gonna mix everything together. And this is a quick, delicious dessert. This is a real crop pleaser. Okay, now we're gonna just, now we're gonna pour it on top of the layer, of the cookie layer. Now we're gonna spread it a little bit. You don't really have to use the spatula. You can just use your pan and move it back and forth because it's gonna be even. As long as you've added everything that you were supposed to, it should come out perfect. Now what we're gonna do is pop this into a 350 degree oven for 35 minutes. No more than 35 minutes. No matter if when you touch it, it's jiggling or not because you want this to be ooey gooey, okay? You want it to be really soft when you eat it. So, 350 degrees for 25 minutes. Um, 35 minutes. And there it is in the oven. And we'll be back in 35 minutes. Green beans are... Ooh, look at that. Boiling down pretty good. Let's see what they taste like. So, usually when I do my green beans, I'll... 
do them like this. I put the seasoning in them, and you really don't have to stir them. I let them just boil all the way down real low so there's not a lot of juice in them. But I don't start with a whole pot of juice in the first place. So I'm gonna take this out and I'm gonna let it cool and I'm gonna taste it and see if I need to add anything. And if I don't, they'll be done too. That's cooked down far enough so I'm gonna, after they cool down for a couple minutes, I'm gonna taste them. And then if they're good, I just turn down and let them cool all the way down. All right, so this is the finished product. I made the turkey helper. I made green beans with smoked turkey tails. I made a pan of sweet cornbread. I cut it up and put it in this pan so I won't have to take my glass dish over there. And a chocolate chest cake. All right, I hope they like it. I'm gonna wait just a little bit longer, let it cool down a little bit so I can handle it better going over there and I will be taking them dinner. This is just a recap of everything I cooked today. The turkey helper, the green beans with smoked turkey tails, the sweet cornbread, and the chocolate cheesecake. I'm gonna end this video with memories of our Uncle Calvin.